Nobody knows how they do it. Every year the rays get younger. Every year the rays get cheaper. Every year the rays are filled with people who have to wear hello my name is stickers on their uniform. And every year the rays are playing in October. How do they do it? Let's bring Ulysses Sembrano, easy for you to say, host of Locked On Rays on the show. Oh boy, this is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans. Welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. Yes, even in the offseason, we talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host. I know my name. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan. You don't have to call me all that. You can just, you know, look at my lower third. Where is it? Everything's going right today. Call me Sully. I am an Emmy nominated. Believe it or not, they gave me an Emmy nomination as a producer of television. I've been podcasting for over a decade now, and this is now my fifth year of being a host on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. Follow us on Twitter, Locked On MLB Pods. Also on Instagram, same handle. You can follow me on Instagram at Sully Baseball Podcast. And also feel free to subscribe to us on the YouTubes, where you can see my face and my hair, which needs a little bit of a trim. You can also tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB, or check out some of the other great shows on the Locked On Podcast Network. And let's just pick one at random. Locked On Rays with Ulysses Sombrano. Let's bring him on. And uh, Ulysses, welcome back to the show. Oh, let me get rid of my lower third there. Uh, welcome back to the show. And I just want to say how... Uh, appropriate is that I was making a joke about how I can't name members of the Rays now, and I stumble over your damn name. Um, but just so you know, Locked On has actually, I didn't, this is not how I wanted you to find out, but you've been asking for too much money, and Locked On <laughs> has traded you oh. to the Mets podcast in exchange for four younger podcasters. So oh uh, they're they're just, uh, and they're and you know what, they're all going to be good. So but, welcome but back. Is it- Thank you for having me back. But is is it pending a physical or is it straight through? I mean, what, <laughs> yeah, what are we talking uh, about here? Yeah, by the way, I just want to address this right away because I was tempted to jump on and do a podcast about Carlos Correa signing a six-year deal with the Minnesota Twins. And then I realized I had on Ben Kaspik of Locked on Giants in that tiny sliver where he was a member of the Giants. And then I did back-to-back episodes of, oh, my God, they canceled the, the the press conference. What's happening? Oh, my God, he signed with the Mets. And along well, the way, I made a joke saying he's going to sign with another team before this is all said and done. So you will forgive me. Yes. Uh, by the way, I didn't realize that Carlos Correa translated means crying wolf. But uh, you'll forgive me if I'm not jumping up and down ready to announce the final destination of Carlos Correa. He's obviously, he has something wrong with him. And so it seems uh, that way. It seems that way, but maybe he sounds with, with the Rays. I mean, by by at this point, it's really kind of uh, an odyssey uh, not not to be a pun on my name, but yeah, it's, it's been a crazy, crazy time uh, for, for baseball, especially that free agency, Man, uh, it hasn't been fun uh, if you're a race fan to, to see this uh, free agency uh, just come and go um, uh, with really just one big move. And it, it is a big move, but that's about it. The hot stove has not been hot at all for race fandom. The warm stove. Has it yes. been a warm stove? It's been kind of coldish you know it's been a if the stove was a color it's very beige it's very gray for the race yeah i mean i i I know i i always find myself rubbing it in people's faces but um the the fact that i still can't believe that the red sox beat the Rays in 2011 that that made no sense to me that that actually happened as you enjoyed some moonshine on this (laughs) podcast but uh because they were such a better team and it seems like the Red Sox were two wins away from the World Series two years ago. 
that seems like a hundred years ago when you look at the way the team looks right now. And you and I were joking before we start recording. The best thing that happened to the Rays is the fact that they remain in the same division as the Boston Red Sox, who uh, the news that we found out about them talk about pending physical with a shortstop. Uh, they let beloved homegrown multiple World Series hero Xander Bogarts walk. But don't worry, they signed Trevor Story just a year ago as insurance for uh, Bogart's walking. Oh, wait, he now has to have major surgery and is going to miss, if not the full season, at least a gigantic chunk of the season. Um, Chaim Bloom is, uh, it's more of Bialystok and Bloom of what's going on with the Red Sox front office doing everything wrong. Uh, and I think that the beneficiary of that is the, and, and of course the Orioles too, who finally put together a winning season and decided to do nothing in the off season to, to build upon that. Uh, the Rays are still a team that I think are going to be high eighties, low 90 wins, uh, partly because they, you know, the, the idiots that are around them in this division. Well, the, the idiots and the spies, if you want to, you know, get your uh, tinfoil hat on, you can believe um, that Kyle Bloom still kind of works up, you know, in the race favor. And it certainly seems that way because that Red Sox uh, team does not strike fear, I think, on, in, in, in anybody uh, right now in that division. And in fact, you talk about the, the, the wins that could be projected for the race this season. Uh, Fangraphs just came out with their projected F4. And they've got the Yankees at first at 52.8 for the American League. But second is actually the race at at 49.9. That might surprise a lot of people. But if you follow this team, yeah, but but if you follow this team every day, like, you know, obviously we do a locked on race, you you know what went wrong in 2022 and what could possibly go right in 2023. Now, I talked about earlier the that first that first and only big move in the free agency uh, market was getting uh, starting pitching, uh, Zach Eflin. Uh, uh-huh. Of course, no more Ryan Yarbrough, no more Corey Kluber. Uh, so that meant that you, you have to cover some innings, and then Zach Eflin is going to be that guy. Now, he's going to go from a hitter's park to a pitcher's park. He's going to go to from a team that has very poor defense to a team that's built on defense. And third of all, he's going to be getting the the Rays magic touch on pitching, which everybody knows, everybody that follows baseball knows that the Rays have figured out pitching better than anybody else. And I mean, they, they had a guy that sold solar panels two years ago and they and, and they used him for 40 innings and he had a, a 230 ERA. So the Rays can do no wrong, it seems yeah. like with, with, with the pitching. So Zach Eflin, watch out. He is going to be fantastic. And it's not like, He's alone in that rotation, Sully. You know, they've got Tyler Glass now, Shane McClanahan, Drew Rasmussen, and Jeffrey Springs. I mean, now with Eflin, you look at the rotations up and down the American League, and there is not a lot of competition there for for for, for top three. The Rays are certainly doing their part on the pitching side of things. It's the offense that they've really done nothing at all this offseason uh, to, to improve. You know, I, I've been I've been a broken record about a lot of things, and I and I do think that the Rays are one of those teams that should be looking at the players who are still available. Not there's look, there's no more Aaron Judge available, there's no more superstars available. But you've got to take a look, especially you know as a team that that values their metrics as well as they do and knows how. Every team uses metrics. Okay, that's the thing that drives me crazy. We go, like, oh, well, they're and. Everyone does analytics. And do you know what? Even when you were putting together teams with batting average home runs and RBIs, th- those are analytics, you understand. No one they, no one ever, when they were using traditional stats, that was a form of analytics. This is just using advanced analytics that are more predictive rather than narrative. An RBI is a narrative uh, uh, stat, which is why it's valuable if you talk about what happened in the game. Who, how did they win? How did they score their runs? Tell, when you're doing storytelling, yeah. But if you try to do something predictive, that tells you exactly gotch. All right? So every team uses analytics. And a lot of the analytics I don't understand. But I also don't understand all the technology that makes Thanos snap his fingers and make everyone disappear. But I can enjoy 
the fun of that. Okay. I don't need yeah. to see how they shove all the rabbits up their sleeve. Just know that they're, you know, they're, they're, you, every team uses numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I want to get that out of the way. Uh, for a team that uses and has been as successful as using uh, the advanced analytics as the Rays, with some of the changes we're having, some of the rule changes, like the banning of the shifts, most importantly, the banning of the shift for me, there's got to be a bunch of players who have been murdered by the shift who will suddenly see an uptick in their on base, slugging, whatever, um, that are floating out there non tendered. That if you, you would think that the, the Rays would be going out there with a giant net, like in Planet of the Apes, just capturing all these guys. And boy, I've got to get some more up to date references and <laughs> bringing them to Tampa to say, hey, you get to play an independent race, you get to, we, and you'll be able to, to, hit well they've got to be able to do that and you know with their pitching you're not asking them to score 16 17 runs a game just yeah bump it up one run a game and they and it's a 90 win team well it's crazy because the race went from finishing uh, second in the majors at 857 runs in 2021 and then they dropped almost 200 runs in 2022 at 666 not why? a lucky number at why? all why I'll explain why you had a but guy. You know what? And I, I got to tell you something. I, it, it is if you improve the offense just that one tick. Do you yeah. know what? I'll just make a bet right now that the Rays are going to go and be a ninety-some odd win team, and maybe that's why some people are thinking they would finish in second place. And by the way, if you're going to make any bets, easy for you to say. I had to bet online. Bet online remains your number one source for sports betting info, news, stats, and analysis. Again, with the analytics. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional amateur league out there, from pro football to basketball to Stanley Cup to eventually Major League Baseball and how many wins the Rays will get. They've got it all at betonline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. So I did a little tease there. The, the Rays, who were a 100-win team in 2021 when they wet the bed against the Red Sox, and I thought they were going to sweep them the way that the, the game one was a blowout, and then they bombed yeah. the heck out of Chris Sales. And okay, this, this game's over. Yeah. Um, but um, but you were thrilled to see the Red Sox advance. I know that you were absolutely. Oh, you felt oh, so good goodness. because you know it had been months since Boston fans had a championship, and they, you know this. But poor, um, poor fandom, yeah, poor fandom over there. Poor, but uh, like we were saying, um, what 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 happened? What, wait, what, why was there such a downturn? I'll tell you why. So Mike Zanina went from hitting thirty three home runs to only playing thirty games. I, the the variance there is very high. A guy like Brandon Lau who has been an all-star, who has been a team MVP before, uh, only played 80 games and he went from 39 bombs and 100 RBIs to, what, eight home runs, I believe, and, and 60 games played. You had a guy like Wander Franco, who is just a phenom, who is such a phenom that the Rays, the team that would have ne you would never expect to sign somebody for 11 years and $183 million, they do that, and guess what? You have quad issues. You have a handmade bone. He he got a, a hit in, in the hand uh, while playing in Cincinnati. So he only played 80 games as well. So now you have three of your biggest contributors from the year before completely ha at least half the season out. And then you, 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 you count guys like Kevin Kiermaier, Manuel Margot, who only played half a season. And now it starts to add up of like, oh, wait. So who was playing for these guys who are established major league uh, hitters, and then you, you you go down the list. It's the Taylor Walls rookie, Jonathan Aranda rookie, Josh Lowe rookie, Isak Paredes rookie. Uh, you know, it, it, Vidal Bruhan rookie. <laughs> so then you, you start looking around. You're like, why are we playing like we're the Kansas City Royals uh, instead of the race from 2021? And it was just injuries. There were so many injuries, Sully, that the race actually ranked fourth in 2022 with most games missed due to IL stints. Fourth, they missed over 1,600 games. 
So when you look at 2021 and then 2022, the biggest reason why is just they got, unfortunately, handed down so many injuries left and right. But that being said, they still made the F in playoffs. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yes. they, they got almost completely shut out by Cleveland. But yeah. that being I mean, they didn't, you know, Angel fans are saying boo-hoo-hoo. Red Sox fans are saying boo-hoo-hoo. You know, the Orioles, who had a winning season, didn't yeah. make the postseason. So despite all of that, but what you just described to me, you would think, oh, man, they went like 78 and 85 or something. No, they they yeah. had a winning season. And, yeah. you know, the, and I think, in, I mean, that I think that's a tremendous uh, uh, tip of the cap to the front office, to cash, and to the pitching staff. Because let's face it, it was the pitching staff. Hell, they they nearly won the series against Cleveland, even though they only scored the – they only hit the one home run. They yes. scored one run, right? It's, 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 yeah, one, a Jose Siri uh, home run. Uh, but if you look at the stats from the pitching staff, they're ridiculous. ERA, third. Whip, fourth. Walks per nine, first. K per ninth, tenth. Like, they were really good pitching-wise. It's just the offense. I mean – Average 17th, on base 20th, OPS 25th, home runs 25th. So it was just night and day between the offense and, and, and the pitching side of things. So when you go into the offseason and you hear as a fan from, you know, the president of baseball operations and the GM and, and, and the manager, Kevin Cash, Eric Neander and Peter Bendix, they all say the same thing, kind of like we can't stay stand pat. We, we got to do something about the offense, especially – against righties because they had an awful slash line against righties. They, they were hitting 234 with like a 373 uh, slug. Like it was just not good against right-handers. So the idea was, okay, there are plenty of lefties out there. Let, let's get a, a, a Anthony Rizzo, gone. Michael Brantley, gone. Perhaps a switch hitter. Josh Bell, gone. Cody Bellinger, gone. Brendan Belt, Gone. Okay, let's get a righty with some veteranship. Yeah. Jose Abreu, Bel gone. Belt was I, – I actually thought Belt was going to go to the Rays. To me, when it was clear he wasn't going to come back to San Francisco, he just struck me as such a potential Ray that yeah. he was going to be a – you know, he's obviously has World Series experience, postseason experience, and really wants that one more – I got to prove – that I'm still a capable major leaguer. He does that had Tampa Bay Ray written all over him. Yeah. But, and unfortunately but, it, it didn't happen. And unfortunately it went, he went to the same division. Now he's with the, the, the blue Jays. So now you're standing here looking silly, like, okay, well, what can they do? Can they go get some guys for trades? Brian Reynolds apparently is way too expensive. You're looking, okay, maybe Sean Murphy, because you know, the race have a lot of prospects and they can do that. Nope, apparently too costly. He he goes to the Braves and then signs a team friendly deal. Uh, you know the the Atlanta Braves special from the last five years. You, you look at Seth Brown. Is he too costly? Because he hasn't been moved. So, so what are we talking about here now? If you want lefty pop, da Daniel Vogelback, who hasn't hit a lot of home runs since like 2019. I think last year he had 18. So is that really a lot of pop? Uh, it, it's it's January 10th, and you're looking at the lineup, and you're kind of you know, thinking maybe the front office got their hands tied because the money was way too much of what they expected to play. The market just went insane mode. And they're like now thinking, okay, well, let's just hope and wish Wander Franco is healthy. Let's just hope and wish uh, Manny Margot is healthy and, and Brendan Lau is healthy. Like, maybe the rookies finally step up. Like it seems like now it's just a hoping and wishing sort of thing that the offense will pick up. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I mean, who's left out there? I mean, is uh, Gary Sanchez is still out there, right? Is Yuli Gurriel still out there? or, or Yuli um, is still out there, yes. Um, oh, I mean, not, you know, I'm, not, somebody, I'm, I'm not saying Yuli's out there. The end all be all, but like. Well, I actually do like one guy that's out there and he's played in the division and he is a veteran and he's been there, done that <laughs> literally last year. He won a ring. He might have not done a lot offensively since moving, but Trey Mancini, oh, yeah. I, I would love to see that happening. I know a lot of people are kind of against it just because he's a righty 
And that's not exactly what the Rays are looking for, but it's January 10th, folks. Like, it's yeah. not like there's a lot of opportunities out there. And, and I do like that he's in the division. He knows the pitchers. He knows the stadiums. He knows what Fenway is like when it's it's rowdy. He knows what Yankee Stadium is, lo- is like when it's as loudest. So I do like that factor. And he's also played at the Trop, which a lot of free agents are kind of weary and leery about because they don't know how it's going to play. But he's played there and has had some success. And, you know, at some point when you're talking about trying to spark the offense one way or another – to get so obsessed with lefty versus righty, I mean, at, at what point do you say, would I rather have a good right-handed hitter or a mediocre left-handed hitter? Yeah, it would be great if John Olrud in his prime was available out there right now, or you yeah. know, just a, you know a great line drive. You know, it, yeah, Tony Gwynn. If you could clone Tony Gwynn, fantastic. But you can't. Yeah. And no. I, I think one of the things that makes the Rays intriguing, and I and I put the Blue Jays in this. The reason I was surprised that. They had the the race second to New York. I think Toronto may win the division. No, I think everything went right for the Yankees in the first half of last year. Ooh, I yeah. think that they were a, I thought they were a low ninety win team that won ninety nine games because their first half was so spectacular. I still, yeah. I still think they're a low ninety win team, which is a very good team with yeah. a chance to win. But I think Toronto saw a lot of players not play well the first half of the season, play very well the second half of the season. And I think they've improved. I think if some of those players play back to where they normally could, fine. And as you mentioned, you did a laundry list of people, including Franco, who did not contribute at all or virtually nothing in the season that we just had. And they still won. What are the, what's the final total of the wins they had last year? 86 and 76. 86 wins with all those things going against them. Yeah. With a non-existent it's, offense, it, it, it's practically IDH insane that it did. Games. Yeah, yeah. But, so, so now, so now you you talk about the Yankees. They're essentially the same team. Okay, they added Carlos Rodon, so they yeah. they do have really good pitching. But just like it happened with the Rays, the opposite that ha- happened with with the Rays uh, with the Yankees rotation at a point in the season. Sully, eighty eight games started by the Yankees, eighty two. Had been uh, accomplished by the by those starters by the same starters, so they didn't have anybody on that rotation go on the IL. It, it, it was it was insanity. And on the Toronto side, if you look at their moves in in the off season, they've kind of looked at their team and they said, okay, what do we have a lot of offense? Let's ship some some guys over. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez gone, Gurriel gone. Okay, what do we need? We need some defense. Okay, let's and get some, a Kiermaier. And and bullpen, and, and, they, and the bullpen has been helped too. And then right. you, you, oh, there's a Chris Bassett available. Let's get a Bassett in there. So their their off season has been really interesting. I'm not ready to just give them the the crown because I thought that 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 was the team to watch out for in 2022. After all the moves that they made, they looked really dangerous. So I'm not gonna do that again. I, I, once you have to show me. And, and the Toronto Blue Jays, I, I know this might sound a lot of race bias here, but they've done nothing, Sully. So why well, do we keep? Uh, why do we keep amping up a, a team that just hasn't performed at at all? And they keep saying that they're so good, and we'll show it. They haven't shown it yet. I think this is. Uh, I think this is a very interesting year for the AL East. Um, I think that, and I think if Baltimore continues to can improve, I, first of all, there's no way the Red Sox finish higher than fourth this year. Um, yeah. The only way they finish fourth is if last year's improvement by Baltimore was a complete fluke. And we've uh-huh. seen that happen. We've seen teams put together yeah. very, I mean, the Tigers in the end of 2021, they were, uh, they were a little bit over 500 if you took away the first month of the season. And they looked like yeah. they were poised to make a big, big improvement. And they bombed last year. You know, that could very well happen with Baltimore as well. Um, I I think that two or three games are going to separate the Yankees, Rays, and Blue Jays. I think that I think they're all low 90, low to mid 90 win teams. I think if like we saw what happened with the Yankees, everything went right the first half of the season, that they were yeah. able to absorb those two bad months, those and the one mediocre month. And walk mm-hmm. away with a 99 win season in the division. Um, if they had an OK, you know, if they had a very good first half instead of a, a borderline perfect first half, uh, this would have been a you know 93 94 win team. I think yeah. 
I think the Rays are going to win somewhere. At, at, even with that, even if they don't make a big move, I think they are going to take a look at players who are entering spring training saying, God, I need to, we need to sign with someone. And I think that they will scoop up a bunch of them. I think Mancini is a perfect candidate. Uh, Guriel is another perfect candidate. Someone like a Josh Harrison is a possible person. You know, like there's some of these players who are still available. Who say, I just need a place somewhere. Hey, play here. You got a you got a chance to you know play in October and showcase your wares. Um, yeah. I think they're going to make a couple of those deals, and I think a couple of players who didn't pr- participate or didn't produce is the word I'm looking for last year are going to come through. I think the Yankees are going to regress, but just a little bit because. Yeah, I don't think they're a 99-win team. I think they're all between 90 and 95 wins, in my humble opinion. And 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 that's the crazy thing because you don't have to just be a six-war player from Franco, and I need a, another five-war season from Brandon Lau. Like I don't need that. The problem is you have to post, and why do you need to post? Like even if you go 0 for four and you're Brandon Lau and you're hitting second or you're hitting fourth or you're Wander Franco and you go 0 for four or whatever, but the fear that that strikes on the pitching staff that you're facing that the, that elongates that lineup that matters, and it also matters because. The other names that are coming in, you are going to see a dip. If you if you trade in the lineup, Wander Franco's ability for Taylor Walsh's offensive production, boy, you're going to be missing a lot. If if you're going to be doing the same thing with Yandy Diaz, if he gets hurt, I, I mean, it's Randy Rosarena gets hurt. I mean, who are the next guys that are going to to be playing? You you put Josh Lowe, Jonathan Aranda, like these are rookies, so it's a lot of pressure for these guys. And they just showed that they didn't have a really a backup plan. Now they tried to do that with a veteran guy in the trade deadline with David Peralta, and he was he was good, uh, just no pop whatsoever. He had 12 home runs with Arizona, and then zilch with the Rays. So he's an also a guy that is available in free agency. Now, is he learning first base? So maybe that he could be an option uh, for, for the Rays. Who knows? But it really, if the Rays don't do anything else, um, I think it'll be kind of a letdown for, for Rays fandom. But I do think the pitching staff got better. And if karma is nice, then the health injuries shouldn't happen as much as they did in 2022, which should mean that there's an uptick from 86 to possibly, like you say, 89, 90 wins. All right, we're here with Ulysses Sembrano of Locked On Rays, final segment here. Look, we brought up Trey Mancini. We brought up, a you know, you're hoping the pitching staff continues to pitch as well as they do. Maybe you can uh, get a bargain for players who will be truly benefit from the uh, sh- the shift being outlawed. What about young? You know, the one thing the the if you ever see like the images of like uh, like the Napoleonic Wars, where you have these the troops lined up and you shoot one troop and that troop falls and another troop runs right in to take their place. That's mm-hmm. Tampa Bay. Every time a player leaves, gets hurt, another person just comes right in. Yeah. I am convinced. Uh, first of all, I'm convinced the Rays are a playoff team. I mean, they're going to be, if not a division win, they're going to be one of the wild card teams. Same. Okay. Um, I, you know, I think that I think both the Yankees and Toronto. I think, I think they're they're going to be battling out for the division with Tampa, um, and then I think Seattle and Houston are battling out. I hope the Angels are. Not that I'm an Angel fan. I'm not. I just mm-hmm. want to see Mike Trout and Shohei Otani play a game in October. You know, you know what I've heard before is that Mike Trout has only nine plate appearances more than you do in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, yeah. and that's yeah. stupid. That's <laughs> stupid. Yes, so, um, so you know, with all that being said, um, and and then I, you know, I think Cleveland is is the best team, but they could always. I think there's that we have three wild card spots. Either the Yankees or the Blue Jays are going to have one of them. I think Seattle is going to have another. And I think Tampa will battle out with the other one. So I think Tampa is probably the best talented team there. And I guarantee you, and it's a surefire bet. No, we've already done that, Ed. Um, <laughs> I I think Tampa is going to be in October again. And some name we've not heard of is going to hit a massive home run, come out, get a crucial strikeout, make a diving play, something. 
someone who's probably in single A right now is on. I've never even heard of this kid, and he's hit two <laughs> home runs off of you know off of Corey Kluber. No, I guess Corey Kluber is with the Red Sox, so he's not going to be playing in October. Yeah. But let's um, say Cole. Let's say Cole. Like Cole. Well, Garrett let's Cole. Thank you. Yeah. Thank there you. There we go. Um, who is your uh, pick to be the anonymous 19-year-old Ray who comes in and is this year's Randy Rosarena? Yeah, I, I, he's not 19, but he's close to it. He's 22. He's in AAA. We actually have had him on the show on Locked on Race. He's an Australian player. His name is Curtis Mead. Um, he is just fantastic. Oh, I heard that he, episode. Oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah. Yeah, I he, forgot. He was, yeah. Yeah, he was a lovely, lovely guy. Um, gave us a lot of insight on, on how, how he does, um, what to do to prepare for the game. Uh, and he has just done nothing but hit in the minor leagues. I mean, this guy is just impressive. He's also um, possibly going to be playing in the World Baseball Classic, representing his home country. So that's really exciting for him and his family. Um, and he should be the guy that gets the call if one of the infielders is either not producing or, or gets hurt. Uh, he, What's he his main getting, position? He has kind of moved all around the infield. He okay. has played third mostly, but there's talk of first base, maybe a little bit of second. But I think it's just going to be a corner infielder kind of guy. And a lot of other people are just saying, like, he might just be a DH sort of guy. I still have hope for the infield glove to, to come up there because, I mean, 22 – pretty young he's an athletic guy so I, I i i would give him a little bit more time before uh anointing the guy dh but he should be the name to watch out for to make an impact as a rookie uh, because we've all we've seen the other ones last year so i don't want to give you the same names of josh Lowe and vidal brujan and taylor wallace like sure i hope that they produce more than they did in 2022 but a new name that could bring a punch to the lineup could be curtis mead there you go well look at this is Sombrano. You've been on the, you did a bunch of these shows. So it's been a little while since I've had you on the show here, but we wanted to make sure we got you on before spring training began here. Um, look at I, uh, I can't pretend that I'm a Rays fan <laughs> because you know I'm a native New Englander, and the Rays and the Red Sox have clashed a couple of times in the postseason, yes. and, and yeah. including uh, one absolute classic ALCS in 2008. Oof. And uh, uh, and a surreal division series a couple of years ago, and then there was you know a couple of uh, there was the wild was it no it was a division series in which the Sox won, but it was the one blemish on Koji Uehara's postseason was the yes. Lobaton home run into the the into the Ray Tank into Very the Ray good Tank <laughs> yeah oh, <laughs> oh I I I thought they were about to sweep. I was like okay, and I remember I was actually. In my cubicle, everyone else had left, and I was in my cubicle listening, and Shohei was completely unhittable. And he yeah. was unhittable that postseason, save for that home run. And I remember and I remember when Lobaton hit the home run, I was listening to the Red Sox feed, mm -hmm. and everyone was just like, oh, wait a minute. I guess that's the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, it was a walk off. And, and, you know, funny. I also have um, a story about that. I was I was actually studying abroad. I was in France, and so it was like I think probably like two o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, and, and because of the time difference, and I was trying not to be so <laughs> loud because <laughs> I was you know with roommates and all that. But it was it was really exciting. But unfortunately, it didn't happen the way that it needed to. But you know, it's a new season, twenty twenty three. Let's hope for good things. Uh, if you're a race fan. Uh, just more health, honestly. Like yep. the pitching is going to be there, the bullpen's fine, and you have the right names in the lineup if they are healthy. If they are healthy, this is a good team. The problem is when everybody in the front office uh, says after 24 innings, uh, basically worth of baseball, that they are going to improve the offense, and they don't improve the offense as of January 10th, it's going to look like a letdown. Well, it's never a letdown having you on the show. Uh, tell people where they can listen to your show and uh, follow you. Well, they can follow me at Sombrano Ulysses, as you can see it on the screen on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, it won't take much for you to just type in Locked on Race. We have 570 subscribers on our way to 1,000, slowly but steadily. And you can do that. You can subscribe and like our videos, Locked on Race on YouTube. And you can listen to us uh, every day on any podcasting uh, platform. 
And thanks so much for making Locked On MLB your first listen every day. For your second listen, obviously make it Locked On Rays. But for your yes. third listen, check out Locked On MLB Prospects. Friend of the show, Lindsey Crosby. He's a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. And how many of them are with the Rays? Probably a bunch of them. It's a free and available wherever you get your podcast. Talking Rays. How do they do it? We still haven't figured it out with Ulysses Sobrano of Locked On Rays. This has been a Locked On MLB Locked On Rays crossover for the 11th day of January 2023. I'll believe the Correa signing when I see an approved physical. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.